is a video series about people who are fearlessly fighting the language barriers for their companies and customers. Many people have gone before them over the millennia of human civilization. The stories are sometimes heroic, but oftentimes end in lost fortunes. This time though, it's different. The technology is ready. Nobody needs to suffer from the foreign language barrier any longer. The world is becoming massively multilingual. Let's talk with the gurus who make this happen. Welcome to another episode of Taos Talks. Today we've moved away from North America and Europe and we're moving towards India. We've invited the two co-founders of Reverie, CEO Arvind Pani and CTO Vivek Pani, uh, to join us and talk about the Indian language markets and the work that Reverie and others are doing to help get the Indian languages online. So Reverie was founded in 2009, so uh, you're celebrating your 10-year anniversary. Uh, and the goal, as I understood uh, back in 2009, was to build technical solutions for Indian languages. Uh, and you have developed two technologies, pra Prabandak and Anuvadak, and probably my pronunciation is a bit off, and I'm sure you'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, but before we dive into that, uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself and your role within Reverdy uh, a bit more. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, 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 my initial part of my my career was uh, in in various companies. I started with a public sector company here in India, and <clears throat> then uh, I was with Intel for about uh, seven years. So total about ten years. After which I have been an entrepreneur. Uh, of course, Vivek is my co-founder, and uh, he's also my sibling, my brother, and then. Uh, 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 and it's been now 12, 13 years that uh, I have been an entrepreneur and it's been, it's been an exciting uh, uh, journey since then. Uh, multiple products, several milestones and the great thing about, uh, about this journey is that the vision with which we started, our vision with which we started was language equality on, on internet in India. That vision continues to drive us, it has not changed. Although there are several milestones, like I mentioned, that we have crossed, and uh, I'm pretty excited to be uh, here on this uh, on this show today, and look forward to speaking about our journey as well as our plans into the future. Thank you so much. Great, and uh, Vivek, also a short introduction from you, please. Yes, um, so uh, I am Vivek Vivek Anand Pani. Um, like Arvind said, I am uh, his younger brother. So. We uh, more or less had a similar journey, um, uh, and uh, we founded Reverie uh, with the mission to try bridging the uh, language divide on the internet, and uh, that has been a very uh, strong passion uh, for both of us. But uh, it was also because I had a pretty long experience of working on Indian language technologies when we started uh, Reverie. In fact, the very first startup uh, I had dissuaded Arvind from going after Indian languages because I I felt that market wasn't ready. But after uh, seeing where it went, uh, we thought that it was best for us to focus only on our strength. And Indian languages was our strength, and the market was uh, you know uh, uh, growing. So so I I am very glad that we have we have stuck around and. We have done quite a lot of phenomenal stuff in the past 10 years. I would also like to spend a little bit time on the vision itself. Our, our vision statement is uh, language equality on internet in India, right? And I would really like to explain what equality means, okay? And for that, I will have to give you a little bit of context. Now, as we all know, India was a British colony. And uh, it was ruled by British for about 200 years. And it's been about 75 years uh, since India attained its uh, independence. Uh, now, uh, during British rule, India got introduced to English as a language. It also got introduced to English as a medium of education. Now, the British introduced English as a medium of education because they also wanted to create a layer that could understand English and that could understand Indian languages. 
so it would be e it would be easier for them through this layer to be able to manage such a large country right and we have continued with uh, english medium as our primary medium of uh, education so economic development and english as a language is very closely tied and it is it is interrelated so uh, so english is an aspirational language in india now despite all of these things right even today in india not more than 4% of indians can claim that they can rely only on english and will not have any dependency whatsoever on any of the local languages right now uh, for a for a moment let's talk about the traditional media which have been in existence in india for a very long time internet is a new phenomena right uh, and uh, uh, and it has like inter internet came to india in about late 90s and it is only now that it is starting to get to the masses right it it still was kind of niche for a very long time almost about uh, 20 25 years it was it was kind of niche now but the other traditional media have existed for a long time you take uh, print media you take television you take uh, radio right all of these media have existed in india even immediately after independence now for accessing any of this media the users do not have to do anything different to be able to engage in this these media in indian languages compared to what they have to do or uh, to engage in english language what i mean by that is if i really have to read a a, a newspaper in my language i have to subscribe or i have to buy that newspaper right i'm talking about a print edition of that then if i have to watch a television channel the only thing i have to do is flip channels and uh, depending on what channel i want to watch whether it is content in my language or in english does not matter the activity is the same right similarly listening to radio channels or watching a movie all of these things there is absolutely nothing different that needs to be done for indian languages compared to english now when you do that that's called equality of access we are making the access to the user equal now whenever that has happened in india right even today i am talking about the statistics as we stand today 92% of print media is in local languages it's only 8% which is in english right then 95 to 96% of the television viewing engagement happens in indian languages okay and uh, again 95 to 96% of radio engagement listeners of radio and uh, people also who go to movies right those are also in in uh, in indian languages unfortunately in the internet in india got created keeping in mind the english audience because that was a niche audience which could access internet at that point in time who had pcs to be able to access when internet came to india so the channel of access the interface user experience right everything was designed ground up in india for english only and it's only now that we are trying to adapt the same thing for indian languages so there is a difference in building something ground up for for an audience and adapting something from english to indian languages right so therefore by design there is a barrier that got created between indian language and english so anybody who does not understand english well had difficulty accessing the internet right so which is where our vision statement coming is coming from that we want the equality of access the way it is existing in other media to exist in internet as well so that any user in india will be able to access the internet engage in the internet as easily as english language irrespective of language preference everybody should be able to feel very comfortable engaging uh, using the internet so that's what is about our vision right actually um i should also introduce my co-host for today uh, shika sharma hello hi as you mentioned that the vision of revery is to democratize the internet content in by empowering the indian languages so as you know there are 22 official uh, languages in india and more than 1000 languages unofficial languages means if you go for 50 kilometers the language changes in india so how are you addressing this distribution and how many languages does revery want to support or need to support 
Now coming to languages and number of languages that we focus on, you are absolutely right. You are spot on. Every 40 kilometers in India, the dialect changes, right? And uh, there are thousands of languages. Uh, Indian constitution itself could not recognize all the languages as with official status. So they listed down depending on popularity and number of uh, number of users who speak that language to 22, right? And within those 22 also, there are about 11 languages which cover, right? I'm not talking about specifically for, for scripts. Now, there are several languages which can come under a single script. But if you have to focus only on languages, there are about 10 or 11 languages which can cover about 80 to 85 percent of uh, India's uh, population today. So we focus largely uh, our, our customers, our business to business customers, our our government customers who want to enable the government to citizen engagement, they they come up with these requirements for 10 to 11 languages. And in some cases, right, especially uh, from the government, we have had requirements for all the 22 languages to be covered, which are under official status, right? So those are the languages that basically we cover. Can you be specific to define those 11 languages? Yeah, so, so those, Yes, I can, I can, I can mention what those languages are. Let's divide it based on the based on the Indian map. So, if I take north of India, there are two languages which are popular, which are Hindi and Punjabi. If I take uh, South India, there are four languages: Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, and uh, Malayalam. If I take uh, West, Western India, then it is Marathi and Gujarati. And uh, if we take uh, eastern part of India, then Bengali, Assamese, and Odia. So these are the 11 languages that we are talking about. Okay, great. So and then maybe a follow-up question. Um, you were saying you're, you're uh, working towards language equality on the internet. Um, and we know that you have developed two technologies and uh, that you're supporting these 11 languages. But what is it that you're doing specifically to help um, get all the people in India access information in their native language? Can you talk a bit more about that? How you are helping? Uh, uh, so uh, um, coming to uh, uh, technologies, right? Now it is we are not working on two technologies. We are in fact working on multiple technologies. In fact, I would like to mention that we were the first company in the world to support Indian language uh, display on Android. That was way back in 2011 when operating systems like Android and even iOS didn't have support to be able to display Indian language text, display or type. Let me come to the approach that we have taken. Even though we are a technology company who, who, who are focusing on solving this problem of languages, through technology. Essentially, what we, we figured out that the problem that we are solving is the problem of user engagement, right? How can users engage on the internet in their languages? That's the problem that we are solving. Mm -hmm. Now, when we are talking about user engagement, there are various things which are there. First and foremost is that for any user to be able to engage, right? There needs to be content in that user's language, okay? And by design, our, our model is, is B2B to C. That means we are reaching out to the end users, to other businesses, because language has got play across multiple segments and we can't be focusing on just one or two segments. So first is that we enable content for these entities who are our customers to be able to engage with their end users in their language. So our approach has been that every aspect of user's digital journey we should be able to address, the reverie should be able to address through technology. We do not pick things that are, uh, 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 you know, uh, right out of the box for English, because we understand that the Indian languages are actually very different from uh, any, any of the Latin based languages. Uh, uh, and since Indians use both the languages together, like Indians do use English, um, uh, 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 and and they mix that with uh, their native languages. So uh, so that way, when we are trying to use the same algorithms, they do not function the, the right way because we already have enough pre knowledge. 
So we, uh, when you look at that, uh, you, have, uh, you find that the, the script itself solves a lot of things for you. The language when it is spoken is phonetic in nature and therefore there are a lot of errors that one would have otherwise made in English would not make in, in, in the native languages, right? So uh, it, it, it just makes things a lot more uh, efficient, uh, you know, faster, better. And those are the things that we try to implement as much as possible to be able to make our solutions, you know, easy and good to use. So that's one thing that we try to do everywhere so that more and more people who are adopting to their languages, the technologies can evolve into their usage very, very rapidly. If you also want to break down the language barriers for your company and your customers, you need your language data to work for you. TAUS, the Language Data Network, provides data and tools for machine learning and for business intelligence.